Today we'll be discussing the rise of Beanie Man. He found fame in Jamaica when he was just 8 years old and released his debut album at an impressive age of 10. Throughout the next 24 years, Beanie Man continued to make a name for himself, releasing 18 studio albums, gaining international acclaim and traveling the world. But along with his success came a fair share of controversy. He was involved in two highly publicized feuds. He faced backlash from the LGBTQ community and his relationship with religion was somewhat confusing. So if you thought reggae was all about peace, Beanie Man proved that sometimes even the most laid back music genres can have their fair share of drama. But that's why you're here so let's get into it. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Beanie Man, born Moses Anthony Davis in Kingston, Jamaica, was inspired by music from an early age. At just five years old, he began toasting, a unique Jamaican rap style encouraged by his drummer, Uncle. By age eight, Beanie Man won the Tasty Talent Contest in 1981, connecting him with local music influencers. After dropping his debut single, Too Fancy, he quickly became known as the young DJ Beanie Man. After this, his career soared and he began making music with stars like Dillinger, Fathead and Ringo. At the tender age of 10 years old, he dropped his debut album, The Invincible Beanie Man, The 10-Year-Old DJ Wonder. The album contained the local hit, Over the Sea, but after this, he took a break to finish school. In the early 90s, Beanie returned to the music scene. He performed with dancehall greats like Ninja Man, Admiral Bailey, and Shabba Ranks. He released several singles and the album Cool Cool Rider around 1992. Though the album did not make many waves, his performance at Reggae Sunsplash Festival caught people's attention, sparking Beanie's first public feud and propelling his career forward. The feud began around 1993 between Beanie Man and Bounty Killer and centered around three songs. The first song was Beanie Man's first chart topper, Matey. The second was his single Bad Man Wicked Man. And the third was Bounty's track, Spy Fee Die. All three tunes hit the airwaves around 1993. Bounty Killer accused Beanie Man of stealing his style and using catchphrases from Spy Fee Die for Bad Man Wicked Man. That's supposedly what kicked off this legendary clash. But if you ask me, it's hard to hear the similarities between the songs. In Bambi's own words, it's really a musical issue where Beanie Man come and pirate my style and acting like it is his. He abused his permit. So I showed him no, he had no right to use this. So it wasn't anything beyond music. It was just Beanie taking my style and I got to prove it's mine. According to Beanie Man, he didn't even know who Bounty was at the time. Nevertheless, this feud influenced Beanie Man to begin singing about guns. When me just bust, me never wanna be a gun artist because me grow in so much violence, so I sang about girls. My first number one song was Matey. It's really the war between me and Bounty that put me in that gunman vibes. Cause me never wanna sing about that life. But when the clash start, I do that. Cause I never wanna sing that life when living that life. Around 1993, Beanie Man and Bounty Killer lit up the stage at Sting 1993 with their unforgettable dance hall showdown. This vibey, less aggressive rap battle became legendary. As the feud played out, both artists used it to boost their careers, releasing the collab album Guns Out around 1994. Beanie Man was busy building his music empire. He dropped Three Against War and his albums Defend It and This Unu Fai Here. And I know I'm butchering that name. After converting to Rastafarianism under his producer's influence, his music took on a spiritual tone. He then signed with Island Records and dropped album number four called Blessed. The album became an international hit, with the single Slam breaking into the rap chart. 
1995, Beanie Man became more mainstream and collabed with artists like Dougie Fresh on the track Hands in the Air. Beanie Man's unstoppable work ethic led to his fifth album, Beanie Man Meets Mad Cobra. By around 1996, he was an international sensation, releasing Maestro, which climbed the reggae chart. Beanie Man's career was clearly on the rise, because around 1997 he starred in the indie film Dance Hall Queen and dropped the hit single Who Am I? His seventh album Many Moods of Moses entered the Billboard 200 and topped the reggae chart. By around 1998, Beanie headlined reggae Sunsplash and signed with Virgin Records. He dropped three albums around 1999, all charting in the reggae and R&B categories. 2000 was an even better year for Beanie Man. He dropped his album Art of Life, which scored him a Grammy and produced hit singles Love Me Now and Girls Dem Sugar. Around 2001, Beanie dropped Youthquake and teamed up with T.I. on the rapper's I'm Serious. Anyway. 2002 brought two more albums, The Magnificent and Tropical Storm featuring Janet Jackson and Little Kim. Tropical Storm became one of his biggest albums in America with chart-topping singles like Fresh From The Yard and Feel It Boy. Yeah. 2003 was a very quiet year for Beanie Man, but he came back around 2004 with another album called Back to Basics. The album gained international success and singles Dude and King of Dancehall dominated the charts. He also appeared on Gorilla Black's Compton and released a mixtape. Now Compton is easily one of my favorite Beanie Man features. At the time, Gorilla Black was on the rise and his style drew comparisons to the late Biggie. I dropped a video on Gorilla Black not too long ago. Gorilla Black even reached out to me and let's just say the man was not happy about the video. But I digress. Around 2004, Beanie Man saw a lot of controversy. Some of his lyrics inspired violence against the LGBTQ community. And after this, activists campaigned against him as well as other dancehall artists. After a Jamaican gay activist was murdered, people began pointing fingers at Beanie Man and claimed his lyrics were not good for society. In one of his lyrics that I can't really talk about, Beanie Man talks about ending the life of a gay person. As such, around 2004, Beanie Man was removed from the MTV Video Music Awards. After facing several protests, Beanie Man apologized, but the controversy continued. Concerts were canceled, and he was removed from the MOBO Awards. Janet Jackson even chimed in and regretted ever working with Beanie Man. Things were getting pretty serious for Beanie Man, and not in a good way. Beanie Man then defended himself, claiming his lyrics targeted pedophiles, not consensual homosexual relationships. He even compared himself to Eminem, saying that Eminem was able to get away with gay bashing lyrics while he was not. Beanie Man also said that being gay in Jamaica referred to pedophilia. However, the people were not having it and the tension continued. In his own words, this is what he had to say. People need to understand this. I'm Rastafarian and I believe in the Bible. I know that if a man sleeps with another man, life ceases to exist because a man cannot breed. Woman to woman can't make no kids. But I'm not fighting against gay and lesbian life. As a man, you don't like to see two men together. You find it disgusting. But that's their life. To you it's disgusting, but to them it's happy. That's why they call themselves gay. They are happy people. They are happy with their life and they're doing their thing. So it's not for you to come and make these people feel sad and unhappy. And dancehall music never set out to do that because people are people. When I see a gay man, I see a man. Beanie Man further explained that he was actually doing everything in his power to help people. I have my foundation, the Beanie Man Foundation for Troubled Youth. And 95% of these kids are boys that have been sexually molested by elder people. So what are we gonna do? We need help from the gay community too. Because if they support all these things, they're not supporting life. 
in an attempt to make amends, Beanie Man allegedly signed the Reggae Compassionate Act, promising to stop performing anti-gay material. However, he later denied signing it and his show still faced protests and cancellations worldwide. The controversy greatly impacted his career, leading to another apology around 2012. In his own words, Let me make this clear and straight. I have nothing against no one. I respect each and every human being, regardless of which race or creed, regardless of which religious belief you believe in, and regardless of which sexual preference you have, including gay and lesbian people. I respect all human beings. I'm just begging all one to respect each and every one belief because we are human beings and this is what we do. Do not fight against me for some song that I sing 20 years ago. There's no one in this world is the same person as though there was 20 years ago. Now for a long time, Beanie Man was sending mixed messages about his stance on the LGBTQ community. Sometimes he apologized, while other times he denied doing anything wrong. This left a lot of people confused and unsure where he stands. In 2015, he dodged questions about his homophobic lyrics, and his stance on the matter continues to affect his career. On top of that, he has faced other controversies, like denying his Rastafarian conversion. Be man the drama magnet. In his own words, I have not converted, I was baptized on Ethiopian Orthodox, and at the age of 10 I became a Judah Coptic. With that being said, the very next year, Beanie Man made a statement claiming he was Rastafarian and he had read the Bible. Now let's go back to around 2006. Around this time, Beanie Man was involved in another big feud. This one was with the original King of Dance Hall called Yellow Man. The beef began around 2006 when Yellow Man took issue with Beanie Man's 2004 hit single, King of Dance Hall. At first, Yellow Man did not take offense to the song, but two years later, when Beanie Man took part in a televised interview, he essentially claimed that he was the true King of Dance Hall and he was better than Yellow Man. Yellow Man then responded with the following, When me come in at this business and start DJ, Beanie Man still a swim round in a him father's balls. So Beanie Man want to go back in a him mother and make him father do what them do for make him and make him over back because him mentally disturbed. Beanie Man sick. Now Beanie Man didn't directly respond to Yellow Man's jabs, but he threw shade in a 2006 interview. For context, Yellow Man was born with albinism and around 1986 underwent surgery to remove a cancerous tumor which had spread to his jaw. This left his face permanently disfigured. Beanie Man also took a jab at Bounty Killer who made fun of him for apologizing to the LGBTQ community saying that it made him weak. In response, Beanie Man called both Yellow Man and Bounty Killer ugly. In his own words, Bounty Killer is a great artist and he's ugly too. He's got a rough thing about him. Jamaicans like that from the Shaba ranking days and the King's Kid days and the Yellow Man days. They like ugly people. In response, Yellow Man fired back at Beanie Man in another interview. Him can diss me all him like, but him can diss the Jamaican public what kind of thing that him say in a rhythm magazine. If me ugly, him pretty. Me no say me wear shirt. Him wear blouse. Me wear pants. Him wear skirt. Around the year 2006, Beanie Man's feuds were non-stop. He and Yellow Man stayed beefing even after Beanie Man remade one of Yellow Man's hits. Meanwhile, Beanie's 15 year beef with Bounty Killer took a turn when he got involved with Bounty's ex, The Angel. They married and had a son, but they broke up around 2007. Around 2010, they even made a duet together, but they divorced around 2011. Years later, Bounty admitted that the situation hurt him. The Angel said that marrying Beanie Man was never meant to hurt Bounty, but Beanie Man helped pursue her dream of singing. Drama, drama, drama. In essence, Beanie's career took a hit after his drama with the LGBTQ community. He did work with big name artists like Nicki Minaj, Akon and Rihanna, but that didn't help to bring him back to the charts. The new generation is not feeling his vibe and Vibes Cartel claimed the dance hall throne. 
Being a man is still active in the music industry. He had a versus battle with Bounty Killer during the pandemic, which was well received. But around 2022, their feud was ignited once again when Beanie Man claimed he could not trust Bounty. They exchanged heated messages and decided that they were not friends after all. Most recently, Beanie Man announced a new album called Sima and overcame a fractured ankle from a taxi slash bike crash. On Spotify, he has about 3.5 million monthly listeners and his most listened to songs are Flow Natural, That Way, Girls Dem Sugar, Dude, and who am I? That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What happened to Beanie Man in your opinion? Let me know down below. Also, add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time, peace. Perfect.